Hello and welcome to my easy to understand guide to Woman's Realm, which is a set historical magazine for A-level media studies component two. This video is going to specifically focus on representation within Woman's Realm, but I will do videos soon about industries, language and audiences too. So check those out when they're uploaded if you want more information for the other topics. It's important to understand the historical context of the 1960s when looking at the representations in Woman's Realm. If you have a look at the front cover, you have a woman looking quite modest. She has a hand over her mouth, which we often think of as being quite innocent and girlish. She's fully clothed, covered up, you know, no kind of um, flesh exposed apart from her face. Um, she's wearing quite fashionable clothes for the 1960s, so these were quite fashionable at the time. But this image isn't particularly sexualised. It seems quite modest and innocent in comparison to a lot of other magazine covers that you might be familiar with. The reason that perhaps women might have been represented more modestly and in less of a sexualized fashion um, is, is to do with the historical context, but also to do with the um, target audience of the magazine. Up until the sort of 1950s and early 1960s, um, women had kind of quite conventionally been represented in quite a modest fashion. They'd often be seen as kind of housewives or mothers um, and seen in a non-objectified fashion. You know, they were there to fulfill a function, to look after the home and to bring up children. Um, and actually you can see this on the front cover as well with the cover lines about um, making children's raincoats and making a home with the treasury of homemaking. Um, so with the image on the front cover, we are seeing women in those quite, quite traditional gender roles of mother and wife and homemaker. We are not seeing her as an object for sex. Now, in the 1960s, there was a sexual revolution kind of underway at the time. We'd had the introduction of things like the second wave of feminism, new divorce laws, abortion laws, contraception becoming available. And what happened was there was this kind of sexual revolution where women started to realise they didn't have to just be homemakers or mothers or wives. And they could, if they wanted to, go out to work or go to university. Um, they wanted more equality in both the home and in the workplace. And and so um, a lot of women in this time period were becoming more sexualized in the media because men were starting to realize that they weren't just there as, as mothers and wives, but they were there as, as uh, objects for sex. Um, and so um, we started to get a lot more representations in the 60s of women in quite a sexualized fashion. So perhaps it's a little unusual that Woman's Realm's front cover seems to represent them in a, in a little bit more of a traditional and older fashioned manner. It doesn't seem to reflect that sexual revolution of the 1960s. And actually, if you scroll through the other pages of the magazine and have a look through those as well, you'll see that this is quite true of a lot of the other pages too. Um, so for example, we see this quite sweet, innocent um, article about Valentine's Day on the contents page about falling in love um, and wanting to kind of um, collect the heart of the man that you are attracted to, maybe finding uh, a man that you could marry. So it was about settling down and finding a husband and finding love. And it wasn't really about the sexual side of relationships at all. The list of contents also shows that women's lives tended at the time to revolve around household items, um, you know, furniture, decorations, cookery, knitting, fashion. Um, and there is nothing really in this contents page to suggest that women need to be concerned too much with things like um, their bodies or um, being sexual objects for men. In the Atrixo hand cream advert, you can see that we get this representation of women um, uh, wanting to have this perfect marriage. It says women, um, the wife keeps everything clean and spotless and shining and bright. So it does, again, suggest that women are there to um, do the housework. We don't see her body, we just see her hands. So her body is not being objectified, but her role in the household perhaps is. Um, and the fact that we see her holding hands with a man with a wedding ring on, it does suggest that women are there to be wives and, and homemakers and not just there for kind of sexual pleasure. Likewise, in the Sunday Cook article about the recipe pages, we see the woman setting the table, cooking and serving for her family, including her husband and children. Again, not sexualized in the slightest. And actually, you know, even on the fashion pages, we see an advert for skirts. Uh, there's no sexualization there. 
There is a woman in a swimsuit uh, in the kind of Sultana's advert, which perhaps might have been a bit more reflective of the sexualization of women that was going on in the 1960s at the time. But that really is one of the only examples of the sexual revolution from the 1960s. If you have a look at the May I Help You page, this is basically an advice page where readers could write in and get advice. Bear in mind there was no internet, you couldn't Google problems in those days. So readers would actually write their problems into the magazine. The magazine would print them and they would have a um, like an agony aunt to respond so in this case it's Claire Shepherd. and if you have a look at some of these they're talking you know the first problem is talking about um, their daughter wanting to get married um, or you know and then she wants to get a divorce you know perhaps a little bit more reflective of modern gender roles in the 1960s where women could be independent from their husbands there is a letter from um, some teenagers aged 15 who have written in to ask about um, how pregnancy actually happens in terms of sexual intercourse, which does obviously suggest some naivety of, of women at the time, the fact that it might suggest that these teenage girls don't really know anything about sex. But that was quite conventional in the 1960s. There wasn't a lot of sex education. There was no internet. Um, so, um, you know, it, it does make them seem quite innocent, although the fact that they're talking about sex at all and the fact that the agony aunt has actually responded with information about how to get guidance about sexual intercourse um, does suggest that they are a little bit more modern and that, that you know the topic of sex isn't as taboo as it used to be. But overall, the magazine really represents women in a kind of non-sexualized way where they are generally expected to fulfill quite traditional old-fashioned gender roles of staying at home and being a housewife and a mother. The magazine itself is called Woman's Realm. The word realm kind of means like your home or the, the place where you belong. So, um, you know, calling it Woman's Realm and then having all of the, um, the articles being about looking after your home and your children suggests that that is where women belong. So the representations of women are quite old fashioned. Even for the 1960s, they were probably seen as a little old fashioned to some of the more modern and liberal audiences that were starting to become interested in feminism. If you have a think about the representation of men within the magazine, have a look at the Sunday Cook article. The man is simply shown sitting down at the table um, with his children being served dinner or lunch by his wife. Um, he's seen sat at the head of the table as well, which suggests power. The young boy is sat at the other end of the table, which suggests that perhaps even he has more power than the wife. Men are seen in quite a patriarchal fashion. He's wearing a suit and tie in this illustration as well, which again suggests that perhaps he's at going out to work and he has a job, whereas the woman is, is seen as being a stay-at-home wife and parent. Men are sometimes seen as a little bit silly in this magazine, perhaps to reflect the fact that the magazine is aimed at women who kind of wanted to laugh a little bit at their husbands at the time. So in the contents page, you see references to um, young boys uh, talking uh, to their teachers and making quite silly outlandish comments. Um, it, it kind of comments about how they are emotionally reserved. There's a bit at the bottom about animals saying that if you kind of somehow manage to get this um, balance times uh, right and you've managed to find a, a partner then it says a rhinoceros's skin won't be able to protect him from the power of cupid swift and penetrating dart as though men are like a, a prey and and that women perhaps are the predator trying to snare their prey so that does reflect women as being a little bit more powerful and a bit more cunning as though their goal is to try and trap a man the way a predator traps prey um, and that perhaps represents men as being slightly weaker and something to be kind of seen as, as vulnerable. And, and perhaps I think that is to reflect the female target audience. In the Atrixo hand cream advert, we see a, a man wearing a jacket and cufflinks and a shirt, suggesting again that he goes out to work. And in the picture, the caption reads, husband keeps the home papered and painted and newly decorated. There is a suggestion there that the men do the DIY around the home um, and or go out to work, whilst women do the kind of um, more domestic chores. The short story Game of Hazard also represents gender in a really binary, stereotypical way, where the women are seen as quite delicate, waiting for their husbands or the loves of their lives to come home from war. And the men are seen as strong, soldiers, brave, war-torn. It talks about them being bloodied and injured in battle, being angry and uh, being dismissive of what they call women's whimsies. Um, so it's a, it's a very old-fashioned view of gender. And this could be because it's clearly a period um, story 
story. So that means it's set in the past. Um, even for 1960s, obviously, this says it was set in 1813. So it's supposed to be a historical story. And clearly back in the 1800s, you know, the gender roles were even more binary than they were in the 1960s. It could also be to do with the fact that this magazine in the 1960s was only a short time after the First and the Second World War. And many women at the time would have remembered that sensation and that feeling and that experience of their husbands or boyfriends or fathers going off to fight in the war. So perhaps the representations being so binary and stereotypical are there to kind of create this sense of nostalgia for the female target audience in the 60s who would have remembered those things happening back in the 1930s and 40s. The May I Help You article shows men um, in a way that is, is reasonably diverse. There are some of the questions that suggest that men and women are making decisions together. So one reader asks about what her and her husband should do about giving consent for their daughter's hand in marriage to her second husband. Another question asks about whether or not they should be trying to force their teenage daughter to stay at home in order to please the father of the family. Um, and another question asks about what happens happens when um, a, a husband and a wife marry um, and the answer from the agony aunt is that it takes two to quarrel so you know there is some uh, representation of gender becoming a little bit more equal and men and women being seen in some circumstances as having equal amounts of power now, this is just one page out of the magazine um, and perhaps these are questions from the readers and therefore they are showing what real readers are going through but the rest of the magazine is designed by the, the publishers of the magazine, the editors, um, through use of photos and posed models and stories. And perhaps that is less reflective then of what real readers are actually experiencing in terms of gender. So in conclusion, Woman's Realm represents gender in a really binary, completely opposite, that means, way in which the gender roles are very stereotypical, very old fashioned for the most part. Um, and actually, even though this is from the 1960s, these gender roles of women staying at home and doing the cooking and cleaning and being housewives and mothers and being innocent and modest and men being the people going out to work and doing business and being less emotional, um, these binary gender roles were stereotypical and old fashioned even for the 1960s when this magazine was released. Um, you have to think about the fact that this magazine came out about the same time as Kiss of the Vampire, which is another one of your set texts for A-Level. So, you know, whereas Kiss of the Vampire seems to reflect more diversity in terms of gender roles, this magazine seems to be a lot more stereotypical. Um, it's, it's very um, sort of cisgender, heteronormative, um, binary opposites in terms of gender. So um, it's worth having a little think about that. It's worth having a think about ethnicity within Woman's Realm as well. Uh, there is no other ethnicity other than what appears to be white British. So, you know, have a think about how that reflects the 1960s. The 1960s, again, you know, sometimes we think of 1960s, therefore it's historical, therefore there wasn't really anything um, in terms of immigration. But actually in the 1960s, immigration had been happening for about 10, 10 years. So, um, you know, Britain was becoming more diverse at that time. It's just that women's realm didn't really reflect it. Um, and whilst it, it still would have been very unconventional to have people from other ethnic backgrounds on a magazine front cover, for example, um, this magazine doesn't really reflect any other ethnic groups within its imagery or wording. And also having a think about how that might compare to Huck magazine. Um, I am going to do a separate video about the representations in Huck, which if you are studying Women's Realm is your contemporary magazine that you will also need to learn about.